So we have Sage here just practicing some longer range recall. I'm gonna try to do it with minimal distractions at first out here in the court. There's gonna be some distractions every now and then with with people and and kids and cars. We've got a lot in the long lead, but we want to make sure that we're we're safe and we have them secured. We want to also be very aware of other cars or people coming in. Sage, come. Good boy. All right. Wait. Good boy, good wait. Oh, get it. Good boy. One of the harder things about using a long lead is just the fact that you can get tangled up a lot easier. So we want to try to be mindful of that, um, as well as not being able to retract as quickly, right? So all things that you just want to be mindful of when you're working with these. longer leashes. Normally I would have an extra hand, but because we got the camera here, be also something to take into consideration. Because I have the camera as well as having the remote to trigger the beep or the vibrate that we'll be working with with him if necessary. We generally do an order of operations, starting with his his name and then progressing forward from there. Okay. Sage, good boy. So that way we don't have anything on him and our battery is dead. We of course want the simplest means of redirecting his focus and having him recall back to us also be the most practiced, most effective. There's always going to be other circumstances though, like if he is really into something and he cannot hear you because you're either further away or he's just too concentrated or fixated on whatever he's focused on currently, right? In those cases, it can help to have a collar on just for the closer tone, one, and or the addition of physical contacts, right? Whether that be the redirection of a vibration feature or the redirection of the static features. And every dog is going to be different. So right now, we're just working on developing his tone training, as well as his recall on the vibrate. And if that won't be enough generally, then we can have him trained to respond to the static as well. Just depends on the pup and also what they are focused on and how much preconditioning that you put into everything. So we've been working with Sage for about a week now just on regular recall, you know, using his name with like light distractions, environments, things like that. So here he's got plenty of loose lead. He's focused on both the children up front as well as the delivery person. He's very excited. Good boy. He just comes back onto, onto us on his own there. So that was really good. Didn't need to use his name or the tone or the vibrate. So once again, went the leash nice and loose. It's going towards the kid on his own. Sage, come. Good boy. Good job, big guy. All right. So there, he listened to us just off of uh, 
just off of his name alone. So that was really good. We'll be pushing it today a little bit just because we want to get some practice with him um, on just the tone and on the vibrate features, right? To help with him redirecting his focus when his mom needs it. So we're gonna start with just the tone. He had issues with that already at the park, but especially with another bar dog that was barking really close to him. It's understandable, especially if he's not conditioned to respond to it, that he doesn't. So I'm waiting for him to kind of walk with me. We're gonna start pretending like we have a circle around us. Gets too far, gonna tone and come back this way. Good boy. And the goal is for him to start to recognize that that tone means that he needs to refocus figure out where we're going and catch back up. Starting with a slightly longer circle. Right? It's kind of in, invisible, but probably around when he gets close to about eight to 10 feet out or so. And then we just shrink that as we go along. And that's a great way to develop a closer walk or a tighter heel as well with these kind of devices. But it's important at first when we're first when we're trying to build that connection between what that sound means and what he should do, give him a little bit of leeway and not try to make, make it too harsh for him, uh, whether it be the, the feedback, good boy, right? You can kind of see in this case, even though he's distracted by the, the driver over there, he's still following me. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, we worked on uh, leave it as well with him and the leash. We'll probably do some food exercises too with it to help uh, with his mom on the understanding of how we developed it. But he's been doing really well when, when prompted for letting go of his leash. So this will be a good opportunity here because we have somebody that's coming in. Actually, he's already drifting off, so we'll go ahead and beep. Yes, good boy. Very good. We'll reward him for returning. Okay. And you can see here, he's interested in going to greet that person over there. I'm gonna go ahead and stop him physically. Hi, how you doing? And then we'll beep them back in. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Had to do some more hand juggling there, just like I said, because I also have to hold the camera and his leash and the controller. So we're kind of a normal person or parent would just have to hold the leash and the controller, make it a little bit easier on them. Okay. So now we're going to be walking in the same direction. I'm going to tone and start walking in a different direction. He's getting himself wrapped up there in the... There we go. Good boy. Very good. That's where being able to practice um, off-leash an environment like a, a fenced-in dog park is good too, so that way you don't have to worry about him getting tangled up in the leash. Um, I don't have to worry about getting ran over by cars um, and things like that. So once again, he's focused on the driver. Good. Yes, good boy, right? So as soon as he stopped focusing on me, and focused back on the driver, I did the tone to remind him to refocus back onto me. He did and came the rest of the way, so I go ahead. Go ahead and gave him a reward for that. Good boy. The reasons why you'll want to have stronger settings on anything is just because it's very easy for pups to learn to bypass 
the, the tone right here, especially if there's other background noises going or if he's just interested too much in the truck, right? So we are toning and he's almost waiting for what he was interested in to be gone and then he responded, right? Which is gonna be fine if it's just out in the field and we're trying to get his attention to come back home for dinner. But you'll want those stronger, more immediate responses and settings in for when the situation is more dire, right? Like if he's at a dog park and he's about to hump a dog or try to hurt a dog that will probably snap at him and cause an escalation, we want to first go ahead and try recalling him with his name like normal and trying to get his attention back so he disengages. But that can very, very easily be brushed off, right? Um, not only because he doesn't want to listen to us, but also because he's just more focused on the, the pup in front of him and his engagement. And also, you'd be surprised at how quickly distance can come into play. Hey, how you doing? How quickly distance can come into play. Yes, good boy. When it comes to sound dropping off, and you can see there exactly what I mean. We haven't put in much conditioning on him for the, for the tone, but it's something that's very easy for him to just shrug off if he wanted to and continue moving forward. Whereas the, the next level um, is either a light static or a vibrate, just depends on what the handler and the trainer um, deems more appropriate for the pup or situation. But here he's gonna be very distracted by the kids and the bubbles. And so I'm gonna start off with his name, Sage. He brushes it off. I do the tone, he brushes it off. I do the vibrate. I hold. And he's brushing that off too, right? Because he's <laughs> found something on the road <laughs> to eat. Yes, good boy. So once we pull that away from him, it was enough to get him back through. Right? And it's in those circumstances where uh, tone, um, tone and vibrate just aren't enough. You know, it can help when we have a higher reward and it can definitely help when we've taken the time to condition those behaviors in, but it just doesn't cause the same impact as the, the static, especially depending on if you can adjust the static correctly to your pup. So you're not hurting him with each one, but it's a sensation that he just can't easily ignore. Sage, good boy. So you see there, he's able to respond off of just his his name again, because he had already gotten used to that food or whatever it was on the floor that he was interested in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I'm gonna use the vibrate, gets his attention. Good boy, yes. Yes, very good. My goal here is to keep him close to me now. And if he starts to drift off past that six to eight foot mark, go we'll ahead and use the vibrate and have him turn back in. Sage, good boy. Boy. Like I said, it's easier to practice this in a park environment, just not close to one. And it'd be a waste of time with the dying light to, uh, take our time to come back out here for it. And you can see here, yes, good boy. We need some conditioning for him, but he does start to make that connection. He recognizes what that pulse means. Good boy. And so just like with everything else, if we do it earlier with him, it's easier to get his attention back in, right? So it's not correcting him preemptively, it's reminding him that he's starting to get too far and to stay close to us. It becomes a correction if it starts to become too harsh and hurts him and he is 
forced to make that decision. You do want that panic button and some of the more expensive e-collars will have like that boost mode for those circumstances, but it's not something that you should be using on a regular basis to train your dog. Right? So I'll start off with the name first, just because he's focused on them. He's not going anywhere, so that's really good. Sage. Right, so he ignores the, the name. Sage, yes. Go to the tone, he responds to the tone. Good boy. Sage, this way. Good boy. All right, good boy, yes. Sticks with us. And then now we're back to maintaining focus. All right, good boy. I'm gonna go ahead and give him half a treat. Let him know that the other half is still there. Good boy. Very good. Leash is nice and loose. There's nobody else around. All right, no cars coming. I'm gonna turn. Yes, so he follows. Good heel. Gonna go ahead and mark and reward that for keeping up. And we'll keep going again. And the goal here be able to pass the children playing and he keeps on getting distracted by a good boy and maintaining his composure and his heel with us. Okay. Good boy, Sage, come. Good. So the beep vibrate. We haven't used static and it's the prongs aren't even on the collar. So we really want to try to take our time to develop everything else first when necessary and then utilize the stronger ones in case of an emergency. Good boy, Sage. Yes, this way. Good, All right? So he sees the kids playing, able to recall back onto a good, good, good close heel. All right? And we're walking back through. Good boy, yes. So here we'll be ready to beep or vibrate if he starts to go outside of our heel range. Good boy. I'll definitely continue to promote him staying with us and giving him rewards. All right, so he's been loose on this leash the entire time here. Good boy. And try to make it up the street and then back. We just focus. Good boy. Good boy. All right, gonna go ahead and cross. Make sure there's no cars coming. Good boy. Yeah. So he starts drifting. Go ahead and correct him to come back in. Slide. Well, I guess signal him to come back in, correcting him for going too far. Good boy. Rewarding him for refocusing. Same thing again, right? He got distracted. I kept going, needed him to catch back up. Could have just used his name, but we're trying to condition him to respond to these other things. Starts overshooting, come back. Yes, good boy. Good job, big guy. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat these exercises a few times while we still have some sunlight left. He's doing really good so far. <laughs> 